The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome back to The Blueprint Podcast. I got my, I should have this pillow behind my back, right? No, no, no. I don't need the pillow behind my back, but I needed to move it. But uh, welcome to the Blueprint. This is Lowe's Moore. Man, I want to wish everybody, I mean, I think it's twofold here. Uh, you know, some some people say Happy Easter. And when I, when I think about Easter, I think about when I was a young man and uh, my mom, and at the time, my mom and dad used to dress us up for Easter. And Every year we used to get a brand new pair of shoes and socks and 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 a nice little suit uh, every year. And I was the oldest and then my two brothers and my sister and everybody was just dressed up would just dress up for Easter. And, you know, the, one of the most important things besides dressing up, which I, we, I don't think we really liked all that much. And I don't, I don't know if you guys remember my mom every year used to buy us those wing tips. Uh, they were these heavy, thick soles. Uh, Look kind of shiny on the top, man, had a little design on it. But I used to hate them shoes, man, cause they would never, you could never put a hole in them, man. And I wanted to put a hole in them so I could get a different type of shoe. But my mom bought them things every year, man. And them things used to last for years. If you kick somebody, they would be really hurt. You know, but I re I just remember Easter. The other part of Easter I remember is we lived in the projects. So uh, my mom uh, would take us downstairs, right? Well, she would go down before us and she would boil all these Easter eggs. That was the fun, boil the Easter eggs and, and then put all the faces on the Easter eggs and just all the designs on the Easter eggs. And she would hide some out in the grass and then she would hide some upstairs and we would have that Easter egg hunt. That's what I remember about Easter. Right. And I thought it was all about the, the Easter bunny. And and then until I realized I got older and I realized that it was really about Resurrection Day. Right. And and that uh, Jesus, who was crucified uh, for those who are Christian, who was crucified. And he died, uh, but he rose on the third day. He was resurrected. He he rose with a resurrected body, right? And and uh, and as an adult, I remember less of the of the Easter Bunny and more of the resurrection and the power of having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, I want to say Happy Easter to those who recognize that, and then Happy. Resurrection Day um, for those who uh, who have matured now and got over the Easter egg hunt and 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 understand the real deal about Easter is about the resurrection. So I want to say Happy Easter and have Happy Resurrection. And and I wanted to start out uh, with something that uh, happened uh, to me this this week as I was walking the other day. And, uh, you know, I walk, I live in Mount Vernon, New York, and I was walking down the, uh, uh, down the Hutch. I live off the Hutch, Hutchison River Parkway, and where the, where the Hutchison River, the river one runs downstream. And most of the time when I'm walking early in the morning, there's no water there. And I just happened, all year was no water. I mean, uh, even though in summertime, it looked like it just dried out. But I happened to walk by there. Uh, the other day and the water was just gushing. I had to stop and take pictures and I had to videotape because there's something soothing about uh, when that water is running. And now water can be dangerous. I mean, water could be, you got to drink it, bathe with it. So many wonderful things you can do with water, but it could be, it could be dangerous if you're in the wrong body of water. 
But in this day, uh, as that stream was coming down and that water was running, man, I, I, I could see a, a sense of refreshment uh, and a sense of peace as I was listening to that water. I had to stop and, and videotape it. And then I had to take two or three minutes of just listening to the water. Right. It was just something soothing about it. And and you, the other thing is, uh, you know, when you talk about streams now that those streams are coming from a different body of water. And I started thinking about the streams of life. And I was asking the question, uh, you know, I ask myself every single morning when I get up, what stream am I in? And we can wake up in the morning if you turn on the television, right? And you turn on the television and most of the things that you hear on news on the news is negative. And sometimes it puts you in a negative stream or puts you in a stream of fear, right? And I try not to get up and listen to something negative. I try to take something uh, positive, like uh, taking out my Bible or my, my Bible App, and I started to read something uh, during the course of the morning, try to get myself in the right stream before I get up. Right. And I always say it's important not only uh, to end your day in the right stream. Right. But to wake up in the right stream. And there could be stream of culture there. You know, there could be streams of political streams. Uh, there could be streams of, of the supernatural um, there are streams of fear and faith, right? And I ask the question, when you wake up in the morning, right? And as you go through the day, what stream are you in? Because it's important, right? And you get, the, you get to set what stream you're in. Nobody can set the stream for you, right? So it's important. Even if something negative happens to you during the course of the day or when you went to bed, when you wake up, you can choose. You have the power of choice and you can choose what stream you can get in. So make sure when you lay down, you get in the right stream. And when you wake up, you get in the right stream. And so to start to show off, I want to make sure that we get in the right stream because uh, here, here's my here's my pebble was a, actually a miniature basketball. But here's my pebble. Uh, this is my pebble. And I'm going to I will drop this in the pond. Right. Because I'm expecting tonight. Right. To get a ripple effect. Now, I don't know. I just dropped it. I dropped it in the stream. Right. And I don't know when uh, this pebble is going to give a ripple effect for some people to show it may impact you right away. Something that you may hear from from uh, one of the guests or something that's said tonight. And maybe it will change your frequency. It would change your vibration. Something that's said right away, right? Or as we go along, right in the middle or right at the end, or you just happen to be thinking about no, nothing changed, but you just happen to be thinking about something that somebody said on the blueprint, right? That can change that ripple effect that can change your frequency or your vibration. And and we 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 are into changing vibrations from negative to positive, you know, from from fear to faith, right? That's what the blueprint is all about: creating a blueprint, right? Learning to live life in the right stream, learning to live life from visions and plans, right? So um, so I want to get right in it because I, I got to get to my guests, but I want to start out with uh, I, each week. Here's my book of the week, right? My book of the week is TED Talks, right? And I, I love by uh, Chris Anderson. This is a, just a tremendous book. Um, if any of you are trying to get over your fear of speaking, it doesn't mean you have to go out and speak, right? But if you want to get over your fears of speak, speaking and communicating, right? Uh, this is a very good book to read. I love TikTok. I got two, I got two apps, right? I got two apps on my phone from Ted talk. Cause I like hearing people tell their story. Right. And that's what happens on the blue pit print. Some, you know, you, you don't know a person personally. So you just look at them and you see their success. And all of a sudden you hear where they come from, right? That we all have to come through something. 
right? And there's, there's no easy road to success, right? You have to work at it. You have to go through some tests and some trials in order to become successful. I always just say, man, you know, it's like playing, uh, you know, you're going in the gym. I'm a, I'm a basketball player. You go in the gym, you, you, you practice all day, you shoot all day, but there's no defense. You really don't know how good you are until there's a defense, right? So you can shoot in the gym and make a hundred shots, but if nobody's guarding you, if nobody's in front of you, if nobody's trying to stop to stop you, you don't know how good you can be. So that's what life is all about. Life is all about the defense that's playing against you and how you can make adjustments uh, on against that defense so you can go on to be successful. So TED Talk, that's my book of the week. Um, powerful. If you're looking to be a public speaker, it's a great book. And then my word of the week, right, is communication, right? Uh, man, I, 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 you know, man, this is just a powerful word. Right. And when I was a little kid, the first thing I learned to do in order to be an effective basketball player. Right. My first, 11 years old, my coach taught me. hit. Now, here's I always say each week somebody gives a nugget. My grandfather said, I'm going to give you a nugget. I didn't know what that meant. Right. But he said, I'm going to give you a nugget, which meant that he was going to say something that was important. And then during the commercial with Damon Lillard. And, uh, you know, Kevin Love, they said, we're going to drop some dimes. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to drop a dime right now. So I hope you're listening. Right. Because one of the most powerful things about communication is the ability to listen. I think that I've become successful as a person and as an athlete because I had the ability to listen. Most people said that I was coachable. Right. So, you know, we don't always think listening is a part of communication, but it really is. Because once you listen, right, once you once you listen, you hear it and then you gain understanding. Right. Then you can communicate effectively. So that's the word of the week. Communication is powerful. Right. And then, you know, I uh, had Hill Harper and his son, Pierce Harper, on the show. And each week I do. I pay tribute to them by doing an affirmation or a quote. Right. So here's the affirmation of the week. Right. The affirmation of the week. I alone am accountable for expressing myself clearly, right? When you say something, when you communicate something to somebody, make sure you communicate it clearly. Make sure people understand your, your viewpoint about what you're saying so they can understand how to react or respond. So this week's affirmation. And then, um, you know, I want to jump right in here now and I want to show a, uh, a video of tonight's guest. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy it. Any parting words for our viewers about tonight or about anything? Yes. Um, I just love the fact that you have this show, another platform to just get positive <laughs> things out there. You're doing it. So I know oh, it's positive you, that we met because of the positive That's things right. that you're doing. Yep. Paying it forward, he Thanks. mentors yes. children. I love it about you. Thank you. So my parting words are just keep supporting Walter Kirkwood. Did you hear that? Keep or you got it. <laughs> and Gloria, why is, it, why is it a magical moment? Because we worked so hard to get here. Listen up. This guy's about to make history. You know why? what I mean? He's about to bring the minor football league into the Washington, D.C. area. Hey, tell them about your business and what you do. Oh, so basically I'm a network consultant for graphic consultant. I'm the president and the owner. Also the owner for the new and the club. Hey, Alfred, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Man, bless you, brother. Thank you. Alfred was a purple line. It's about legacy wealth. Yes. Building legacy yes. wealth for ourselves, our families, and our children. A progeny. Uh, I, I bring on my guest. Can can we show that first pro, uh, the Kirkland Cor Corner promo? It's only a few seconds. I want to show that too. Yeah. So I want to bring to the show right now, 
uh, my good friend and good buddy, <laughs> Walter Kirkland. Man, welcome to the Blueprint. Lowe's, what an honor to be on your show. And you always have led from the front, brother. And, you know, I feel honored to be among Denzel and Hill Hopper and all those people, man. And so thank you for allowing me to, to grace your stage. And congratulations to you, you and your family for a great show. Well, thanks, Walter. I, I appreciate that, man. Hey, it, you know what? <laughs> we, we, we want to take a moment, talk about some things we have in common. Number one, we're from Mount Vernon, yeah. right? Yes, sir. Vernon. We graduated from Mount Vernon High School, 19, class of 1976. We graduated together. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 uh, and then also, um, we were both scholastic athletes. Right. We both won the Con Edison Award. So you couldn't win the Con Edison Award or become a Con Edison Award winner unless you were good in the classroom and, and good in your. Oh, my God. I can't wait to find me to put your memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> Walter Kirkland with an afro. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, there you go, Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, man. Those are our high school graduation pictures, man. Um, <laughs> and, and, and oh, my God. We're going down memory lane, man. I want to, uh, you know, show a couple of um, a couple of pictures. Um, let's show uh, some some of the uh, track. I think we got some uh, track pictures. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, show a couple. Oh, oh man, that's the pin yeah. relay, Rose. We won the championship yeah. mile relay. Now say and that again. We won the championship mile relay. We beat Jamaica Caliber High School. I anchored the uh, last leg, and we were down by thirty meters. And we want to watch it, that changed my life, Lowe's. From that point on, I had 15 scholarship offers. That was amazing. Oh, look at that in the wintertime. Oh my God. Where you find these pictures, man? It was five degrees outside when I ran that race. Wow. It, yeah. It called the yearbook, 1976. And, and we had the other guys on there. You had David Washington. Who's Denzel Washington's brother? Denzel that's Washington's brother. There. That's Denzel Washington's, Washington's brother, the actor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and there go uh, David again. Yes, David. Um, and we we also had Val Jean Garrett play Val football. Jean Garrett, yep. Yep. Val Jean and Billy Johnson. Billy White Shoes. Right Johnson. There Billy Johnson, right there. Yes, thighs for days, Lowe's. Well, you know, Billy, fun. Billy. I hope Billy don't get mad, man. I showed that picture on here, man. He got the <laughs> hey, Lowe's. I wear them glasses today, man. Them glasses. They all come back. They're retro. <laughs> yeah, they just go right in the circle, man. And uh, so uh, I think we got a couple of more pictures, man. So show show a couple of more pictures from when oh, we killing me, Lowe's. You're killing in high school, man. Show show some of them. Not I see, a plus, I see. But just show Patrice, Patrice yeah, out there. Man. Go ahead. Oh my God, look at that. It was a track team back then. Oh my yeah. God, look, look at Mount Vernon. There you go. Oh, the oh, football the team football number forty four. Look at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Lowe's, you're killing me, man. <laughs> You know, you got Tony Crawford, the, the wrestling team. Yeah, wrestling God team. rest his soul. He passed away last year. Yeah, I ran yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, them oh, high school oh, basketball man. Right there in high school. Yes. Yeah. Woo, boy, did Lowe, we Lowe show Lowe. ourselves. <laughs> oh, there go Billy. Billy, yep. The beard. Oh hey, I seen Billy the other day when I was getting a haircut. Man, look at the Afros, Lowe's. Uh, oh, no. my God. You should Everybody see that hair. Everybody had here. <laughs> Reggie Jones. Reggie Jones. Oh my God! Look how skinny he looks there, Reg. Oh, oh well, my he's God! Still, he's still skinny. <laughs> yeah, show some oh, more. Oh, oh, there, there he is, Mr. Frantino, Coach. There's a goat. There's a goat to high school basketball. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I wasn't getting on no donkey, man. They talking about the donkey. You gonna get on the donkey? I said, Nah, I'm not getting on no donkey, man. You're liable to throw me somewhere. And I Coach said, James oh. Lee. James Lee was the football coach and also the wrestler coach. Good guy, man. Yeah, yeah. Keep showing him. I think. Oh, Dave. oh David Ryder. Oh, one of my best coaches of all time. He's 90 years old right now, Lowe's. Yeah, he was awesome. What a nice he still, guy. And still competes, believe it or not, in running. Yeah. Oh, there go Pop Warren, the Pop smooth, Warren. smoothest counselor in the high school. That boy was clean as the Board of Health. Yeah, every day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we got the most feared person in the high school, too. Looking like Tab Conway. Yeah. 
<laughs> she's smiling now, but we when we when we were in high school, man, she never used to smile. Look, get out the hallway, never smile. <laughs> but but you and I, we were good citizens, Lowe's. We were athletes, we were smart, we stayed out the way, man. Under the under radar. Yeah. Oh, there you go. The prom. So oh, prom. look at them big old bow ties. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! You took us out of the yearbook, man. Man, yeah, I, man. I got it right out the yearbook, mm -hmm. and uh, just, just awesome, man. Just so, man. You know, I always say, you know, uh, yeah, I love my life, right? Yes. But if I had one place I would want to go back to, I just had such a tremendous experience in high school. It was a good. It was a good time. I mean, I had a great time in high school. I was actually in no rush to leave. I mean, uh, right. that's, how, that's how good it was, you know, back then in high school. Man, everybody's like, man, I got to get out of here, man. But me too. Uh, man, that, that was a special time, man. Of course, now being married and family and stuff like that, I, that, that comes in as that moment you know, that you would want to stay in that moment with your family and everything. You know what it was, Lowe's? It was um, you and I were very serious. You know, when I would see you, you were a thinker. I was a thinker. Um, I was very quiet. You were quiet. But we were trying to get prepared for the next basketball game or the next race. I was trying to make the Olympics. And um, for me, it was a do or die situation. And I wanted to graduate and go to college. So Mount Vernon had a legacy, as you know, Lowe's, that we had to fulfill that legacy. And whether you're running track, whether you're playing baseball, Ken Singleton, uh, to name a few, uh, Gus Williams, um, you and I, I think, we had a kindred experience and we would join at the hip in terms of always trying to perform uh, academically, but also as a good person. I've always been spiritual. I'm sure you've always been spiritual, but the money earning Mount Vernon syndrome was a big deal for me. Um, I used to train people lows with track and field too. I remember David Washington, Denzel's brother, would throw up. I would because I was like the the crazy six. They called me the six million dollar man because <laughs> me, I wasn't the fastest lows. They called me the blur, but uh, I wasn't a sheer sprinter. I was really a long a long sprinter, the four hundred meters one time around. But for me, I had to do from a physicality standpoint lows. I had to work harder than the average Joe. But um, that's helped me in life. And it's, as you said earlier, Mount Vernon is a part of me. I was talking to Charlie, your production guy. New York always stays a part of us, but it's given me the foundation that's helped me academically, professionally, and even in some of the things we're doing now that you and I will be doing in the future with your with your family and your wife. But Mount Vernon, I tell you, it's been a great experience. And um, the Athletic Center has propelled me to Rutgers. And as, as you probably know, I was in sales and marketing for 20 plus years with some major corporations. And um, the same spirit of winning that race was winning that race in life. So mm -hmm. you have some of the same experiences when you were at the uh, boys club. And um, it's just an honor to still know you and to know your family and to know that we're still here. We've lost some good ones. Uh, um, Lowe's, we've lost Tony Crawford, who was a great wrestler. Um, Ray Williams, I think we lost him several years ago. We, um, we're, we're lucky to be where we are and we're still thriving. So I know I'm rambling here, but uh, yeah. So so um yeah we're gonna get more into that the whole education that experience i want to go back because honestly you mm -hmm. know though we we graduated we had these things in common <laughs> you know my vernon my vernon high school my vernon community all the great things that went on but you know it's not like we we were close friends we lived next no. to each other we so a lot about us we don't know you know other than those things we have in common so Talk to me a little bit about the importance of family. Talk, talk to me about uh, parents, siblings, and mm -hmm. that whole experience, you know, growing up in mom. Yeah, yeah. To be honest, for me, um, a lot of people think I came from this silver plated family. Uh, I actually had a dysfunctional family, to be honest, Lowe's. I didn't have a lot of support, athleticism, and track. And football was a way to get away from all of that. So I took my aggression into athletics and it really changed my life. Um, being around people like you and 
Bill Collins of the world who ran track, who was older, Ken McBride, great triple jumper, um, elevated my status. When I was a sophomore, when Ron Nimhart, if he's watching, got injured uh, at the Cross County, you know what a Cross County is, Lowe's. Yes. They had the, they had the uh, I can't think of the, the relay there, but it was the, I guess it was the sectionals. That's what it was. I was a sophomore and uh, Ron Nimhart got hurt in the mile relay and I, and I got a chance to run in his place. That changed my athletic career in high school. And it took the, um, the negativity that was occurring in the household in a different light. So I think when we speak of COVID in terms of what's good and bad, athleticism is so dear to me that it, it took me out the hood. It took me out of the, uh, the family pressures that was going on. And it really elevated me as a person. That's why I was kind of withdrawn when I was in high school because I was dealing with my own demons with my family, to be honest. And then as I went to Rutgers, I saw other people and it opened up my horizons. But the thing about the, the burgundy and gold was this something that you had to measure up all the time. And I felt so proud to even make the track team, even make the football team, that it was an honor. And it just, you speak of family now. I have a lovely wife, Stephanie Kirkland, who supports me. Um, I have two boys, Lowe's. Um, for you listeners, I have uh, Garrett Kirkland, who is 20 years old at Mercy. And like you, Lowe's, the guy on the right next to my brother, Dennis Kirkland. Uh, he's a baller shot call at Mercy. He had the highest GPA. I got to put this out there, Lowe's. The highest GPA um, in the in the league, 3.93 uh, uh, last year. And uh, he's doing exceptionally well uh, majoring in cybersecurity. And then my other son, Chase, who was premature, was born. You have kids, uh, Lowe's. He was born, uh, believe it or not, 23 weeks and people say, well, what does that mean? Well, most babies are born 36 weeks. He was born one pound. Um, and the doctor said to me, Mr. Kirkland, you may, you may want to terminate him because he may not make it. Well, lo and behold, he's, um, he's about to graduate from Bowie State University down here in Maryland. And um, he's not the tallest guy, but he's relatively healthy. He's had some mild asthma. So family became important to Milo's, believe it or not, after graduating from college. I did not have the foundation like most of us uh, had, but people thought I had. I should have been a very angry person. If I went the other way, Lowe's, I could have been, you know, like Scap and those guys selling drugs. People don't know who Scaps is, but Hippo, Hippo Williams. Um, Lowe's knows who I'm talking about. But for me, I took the other way. So for me, family was good, but family was good afterwards. I hope that answers the question. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, because... You know, I, I wrote in my book from the uh, Boys and Girls Club to the NBA Life on the Now Road. I, I start out with family. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I start my book out with talking about family and mentioning that family. Uh, there's everybody has it. There's a functional side and there's a dysfunctional side. Yeah. Right? But we still love family, <laughs> both dysfunction and function now functional uh side of it and and but it, you know, ultimately it makes us who we who we ultimately become yeah you know, going through that I, you know i uh single parent domestic violence you know and i've ah. lost a lot of you know loved ones um, oh you went you went through it too then okay yeah, yeah. and yeah. so but i talk about that it, the first chapter in my book that's what i i talk about Mm -hmm. and, and like you said, uh, like you said, is just over, you know, you, you started finding places to put your energy. Yes. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I found it in basketball. You, you found it in track and football, you know, so, but family, you know, throughout this, uh, the podcast, you know, dealing with the, lifestyle seven spheres of influence you know dealing with uh the focus of re of religion and relationship of family of education of government and law of media of sports arts you know and entertainment and then business and finance we find ourselves to be in one of those spheres or multiple spheres of influence you know and and uh you know, which becomes 
very powerful to be able that we had sports and coaches, mm -hmm. you know, yes. that into our lives, you know, and mentors that come into our lives. And so, let me let me let me just hit on the coach piece. I'm not sure. I'm curious what you're going to say. My coaches, Lowe's, was like a father to me. Um, we had Bob Brooks, who, God rest his soul, died about three or four years ago. Uh, this guy was this big, you know, you remember Coach Brooks. He was this big six foot four guy, very quiet, withdrawn. Uh, used to drive that black in Lowe's and uh, was a gym teacher. And you say, ah, so what? He's a gym teacher. But this guy really got me through, got me through high school, um, took a liking to me and really mentioned me like a dad when I had no dad. Uh, yeah. Where Coach Ryder, who's still alive, God bless him, he's 90 years old. He was more of the efficient, in charge um, person that was the head coach, where where Brooks was the assistant coach, and there and this was a very racially racially diverse time back in 1972 to 76. And you know, Lowe's, I don't know about you, man, but the whites and the blacks got along pretty well back then. I mean, I had no issues, and I forget the percentage of blacks and whites, but these two guys for me. Um, was my my dad uh, when my father was not around that allowed me to say, you know what, you need to do it this way. Uh, Scarpino, who was a football coach, was he had his own thing going on. He was not like a father figure, but those two coaches, I don't know about you, really was like a surrogate dad that gave me the proper way, black or white, that I'm so grateful to this day. People say, well, you know, who's Walter Kirkland? Walter Kirkland is Dave Ryder and Bob Brooks. Um, and I, you know, unfortunately, I can't say a, a father figure for my family or even a brother figure for my family that really stood, that showed me the way because it was so much dysfunctionality that I had to find another route. And God, you know, God helped me with athleticism. I was a decent athlete that it really put me in the right direction that changed my life radically. Right. Yeah. And, and before we uh, move on, uh, you had mentioned Scap, uh, who yeah. I played with, um, played with mm -hmm. in school, and 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 ended up going to college. Did did very well mm. in, in, in college, and uh, we we almost played together again. Okay. In in, uh, in semi pros in the CBA. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and you know he just missed out on making the team. And, uh, you know, end up buying property and uh, works now somewhere down in New York City doing, you know, taking care of his family, you know, wife and children. And, stuff. Nice. you know, uh, Dennis, which we call Hippo. Right. A uh, lot of pressure in the family. He had so many successful, uh, you know, like uh, Ray and you had uh, Gus and Ray. Um, and 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 then you had uh dennis which is hippo and then you had scap and hippo uh fellow and sam of course you can't mm. forget sam and mm. i mean anything you know like hippo right now man is just like uh one of the greatest i mean handy man oh, is that right mm. yeah i mean you you he can fit anything think about it i mean you know uh sam is doing a landscaping business man during the course of the summertime and and uh hippo um man you talking about replace a window you talking about <laughs> you know, fix a roof man I, and i believe that you know mo the williams family is so talented that it, anything that they set their mind to right they could actually do <laughs> right wow. I mean, just 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 an awesome awesome family and wow. and um you know let, let's talk about the importance of you know, and continue to talk about family, but an importance of faith, you know, and, yes. you know, and in terms of, you know, growing up and, and even now, I mean, you know. Well, well, I think my dad, when he was around and he uh, passed away some 25 years ago, he uh, accidentally shot himself in the leg, Lowe's and uh, died of an infection. And he was 89, believe it or not, at that time. So I'm, I'm what you consider an old baby. Uh, dad had me at 55, believe it or not, uh, I was born at 55, but, uh, you speak about, 
and one thing he did teach me um, was Christ. And my favorite uh, saying that I read pretty much every day is Psalm 23. Um, I get on my knees every morning and I say, God, thank you for my family. Thank you for waking me up. Um, and thank you for all my blessings. Because a lot of times, Lowe's, we, we complain about what we don't have. But what about what you do have? Um, I've almost lost my life three times. One time, Lowe's, I was riding my bike doing wheelies down on Warren Street. Mm. Uh, I can't think of this, the main street there. But anyway, I was wheeling into the main streets down there near FedEx, near Bush, Brush Park. Yes. And one time I was wheeling and I fell in the main street and the car almost ran over my head. That was the first time. It was a matter of inches. The second time I was running through um, a broken down house on uh, Columbus Avenue, me and my brother. And it was a, you know, you, you're inside the house running around and, and my wrist hit the uh, front door and I, uh, my main artery in my wrist, blood was shooting six feet in the air. Um, I almost lost my life then. Then the third time I had a thing called sinusitis. I have a scar on my eyebrow. You probably can see it. It was the size of a grapefruit overnight. And um, I was 13 and they had to go in there to take out the, um, the abscess. So you would say as God in my life, God is so important in my life. I'm the, chap I'm the chaplain for Bowie State track team down here in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And you know when God's around, Lo, you know when you're on your last lap or when you have your last, believe it or not, 20 bucks in your checking account and you get this check in the mail or you get this, you know, I, I do a lot of like voiceovers and media spots. And I sometimes I get these um, checks in the mail for voiceovers that I've completed or media projects. But God has a way of when you are true and authentic, that's the key. When you're authentic to God and, and happy Easter all to, to these your listeners today, he will bless you. And when you give of yourself and you give to others, because it's not about Lowe's, it's not about Walter Kirkland. What have you done for the other person? Have you inspired? And I say to myself every single day, good, good Lord, did I inspire someone? What can I do better? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? How can I be a better man, a better husband, a better father? I mean, that is every single day. And I know Lowe's does the same thing because we're Christ men that you always can do better. So yeah, to, to say that it's not important, it's very, very important. I'm a member of Coach Tony Dungy's Bible study. Uh, we meet um, on Wednesdays with James Brown, the CBS commentator. And we have about 90 people on this national call. And Coach uh, Tony Dungy, as you know, was the first African-American to win the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. he, he just, he, you talk about a man, he has probably four or five Bible studies, but uh, Christ is very important in my life. And I'm still standing, you're still standing lows. And you know we've been here six decades, so absolutely. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's awesome, man. And, uh, yeah, you need, <laughs> you need, when you're going through life, you may, you, you need somebody, man, who, you know, you can reach out to man at, at a yes. moment's notice and be, and be present for you. And, uh, I found God to be that. And yeah. um, the, the other thing, so talk to me a little bit about, you know, we know about high school and talk to me a little bit about going to, uh, you know, going on the co college and higher education and talk about your career, you know, the career you entered. Yeah. And I have to say this because you went to Rutgers University, man. We had some I had some, you know, basketball battles <laughs> uh, with uh, Rutgers University and uh, uh -huh. and James Bailey. And, and oh, my God. And hey, no, the last time I saw James Bailey, you won't believe it. I was in the bathroom and I'm like, wait a minute. Are you James Bailey? He's, yes, I am. <laughs> so we were in the bathroom together. It's so funny you say that. But go yeah. ahead. <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah, talk to me about going to college and the whole college experience and then the transition from. Yeah, our yeah, absolutely. So I had a chance, much like you, Lowe's, I had a chance. I had a couple, several scholarship orders I uh, uh, offers. I actually flew to West Point. West Point was not for me. I was not a straight laced guy. I wasn't feeling West Point. Um, they flew me down to Auburn and Alabama. Lowe's, man, they had jerry curls and gold teeth, man. <laughs> and I'm like, Lowe's, I'm a city boy. I'm from New York. This is not going to work. 
they were going to pay me to go lows and you don't pay track guys to, uh, to go to win track, but I'm like, yo, I appreciate you guys. Manhattan college was another one. They were on me. Texas Christian was another one. Brandis yeah. university. Yeah. Another Texas guy. I should have went there lows because they had a better track program. Um, but I end up uh, going to Rutgers and uh, I remember going there and it was less than 5% minority. I was terrified, but the good news is Val Jean Garrett and, David Washington, who also ran track, they had signed a letter of intent uh, several months before me. And I was kind of holding out, trying to see if I could get a better deal or, you know, I was trying to make the Olympics. But I ended up saying, you know what, they're going there. Why not go there together? We went there together, Lowe's, and we did the same thing we did in high school. It was wow. the boys, boys from Mount Vernon. We won the pin relays. We won a national championship. Uh, it was just a great experience academically. Um, had a good, good career. I was on a student advisory committee. It was very, it was diverse in, in terms of more majorities than, than brothers and sisters, but it taught me about CNN. It taught me about education. It taught me about the rigors of academics, real academics. And then I graduated and I was blessed enough to work for some major corporations, Lowe's. I was blessed to work in sales and marketing for 30 plus years, to be honest. I worked with uh, IBM, I work with Xerox. Xerox probably was the best sales training. It's called spin selling. I still use that to this day. I was there for 10 years. Um, then I went to GE Healthcare, which was uh, selling medical devices, ultrasound to doctors. And I tell you, my income was when I made more money there. And you didn't have a lot of minorities in that business. So I was blessed enough to have God on my side to, to work there for several years. I worked for Honeywell. Uh, national account manager, great uh, selling for eight, nine years. Um, so through my career, I've had some great training with some great companies. Uh, and then from there, I went to Samsung uh, Healthcare. A lot of people know that Samsung that makes the phones, they have a healthcare division. Wow. I worked there for several years. People don't know that. Um, and then the last several years, I've been doing um, media and healthcare consulting uh, with this Kirkland's Corner I've been doing. And I do a lot of, um, I've been in about 20 movies. A lot of people don't realize I've been in 20 movies. Uh, that's Kirkland's Corner. That's my show right there that you're showing. Right. We, that's a community show that we do, much like yourself. Uh, we, we do it probably once a month, not as much as you. When we were in studio, we did it more. But with COVID, um, they had to shut down the studio. So we've been doing it virtually. But it's a community talk show. Uh, we've done about 20 of those. And it's been a lot of fun. And we have another one coming up for you uh, viewers this Thursday, we're gonna have the first African-American mayor of Bowie, Tim Adams. He's about to run for comptroller of the state of Maryland. This man, Lowe's, is in a wheelchair. He um, had a very tragic accident and he can't walk anymore. But if you meet this dude, he is just a beast. He um, has a company, defense contracting company, where uh, he just won a contract Lowe's for $500 million. I'm gonna say that again, $500 million. Wow. He's very successful. And then along with that, he wants to run for the state comptroller. And Maryland is the most the wealthiest state in the country. So this man is just a legend. So he's going to have him. Then I'm going to have two eye, two, uh, eye doctors, uh, Mashika Bunyan and Lamont Bunyan, uh, two eye doctors. So on my show this, this Thursday. So I've been doing that and I've been doing um, these projects. Often I'll uh, do some voiceovers, what you hear in a commercial, and I'll do some media projects. Um, believe it or not, I played military like I, I was in a, I was I played a head coach a couple of years ago in the Super Bowl championship. Uh, they were playing uh, this commercial with Steve Smith uh, with Under Armour. I, I play coaches and I do the commercials. So you might see me or you might hear me nationally on commercials. I do that also. So, yeah, I just at this point, like yourself, to have diversified um, and you say communications lows. That is so important. I mean, it's not what you say in life. It's how you say it. I'll say that one more time. Right. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. And when I speak to these young mentees and people I meet, it, I get really upset, Lowe's, especially African-Americans, when we don't open our mouths and we don't ask for the order and we don't have a sense of urgency. Um, that is so important. It's a very competitive society. And what happened to the Capitol just a couple months ago, if you don't think we live in a racist world, you need to wake up and you need to be ready and be able to tell people what you want as to your opening statement about vibrations and frequencies. And when you have the floor, 
The other thing I teach Lowe's is an elevator speech. When you have the floor, people make a decision in the first 30 seconds. Do I even want to talk to Walter Kirkland? Does he have something to say? Is it compelling? Do I want, you know what I mean? You've got to find a way to do that in every single interaction in a certain way because people, you're taking their time. So anyway, I know I'm going off on tangents, but um, I thought that would be something you want to hear about. I, no, I thought that that was uh, that is perfect because, you know, I learned over the years and uh, probably both of us. I don't know how outgo outgoing you were. I was not. Right. So, I, I you know, no. I was the last one to raise my hand in the classroom. Uh, and if it was coming to getting up to say something, you know, I didn't I wasn't going to say anything. And, and then. I was fortunate enough to be in the in the Boys and Girls Club or the mm -hmm. Boys Club back then at the time. And I was uh, selected against my own will, right, to go represent as a little kid, 11, 12 years old, to, to put on the little Boys Club jacket with the emblem on it and take us to the Lion Cl Lions Club, the Rotary Club, mm -hmm. and all these different um, community organizations to talk about my experience at the club and the programs at the club. That's how it started. I started to break out of that uh, as I got older, right? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, Lowe's, I used to be so nervous, man, believe it or not. People say, no way. I used to get nervous to speak. I used to, my, my right leg, Lowe's, would shake because I was like, oh my God, I'm afraid I'm going to, real talk, people can't believe that. So trust me, I've come a long way, bro, because I had no one to teach me. <laughs> and I was afraid I was going to say the wrong thing. I even stuttered, man, because I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that's what fear would do for you. And and, uh, and 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 you know the other thing that helped us too, I think as well, is playing sports. Yes, that's when I made a transformation. Yeah, Absolutely. that yeah. help helps you transform because your swag lows. When I when I was when I made um, and you were at many of those dinners. When I started winning these awards and people wanted to have me on the radio, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I maybe I'm all right now. Maybe people <laughs> like me. Maybe they do want to hear what I gotta say. Yeah. And when that and when that happened, you're right, Lowe's. The confidence changed. It went to a point of, I have something to say. And you know what? I'm gonna say it with confidence. Yeah, no, that, that's a very powerful thing. And and um, you know, uh, talk to me a little bit about the 100 you know becoming the founder and what made you think about starting uh the 100 black men and what is yeah. the 100 black men lows lows you know we could go on for another show about that the 100 black men of america is an organization is the biggest mentoring organization what you're showing there is tim adams the guy that i'm going to interview on thursday and okay. these are the these are the brothers of the 100 here when i formed the chapter 10 years ago there was a big gap um, much like you have in New York and Brooklyn and the Bronx, where black boys were stealing and robbing, not having any positive role models, that the 100 Black Men of America is an organization started by David Dinkins, by the way, in New York in 1963. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, David Dinkins, he was the mayor. Uh, I know I'm dating myself, but it's the largest mentoring organization in the world. We have uh, 105 chapters. We even have a chapter in London and we do um, education, mentoring, health and wellness, and financial literacy. There's, you know, no one teaches us Lowe's how to be a business person. No one, and a lot of us like you and I are single parent people. And if you're not changing your sexuality, you're getting into trouble because you don't know where to go and what to do. So the 100 Black Men is an organization. You have bylaws. We had to form an interest group. We had to raise $5,000. We had to present to the national board in Atlanta we got turned down loads the first time. So the second time I had to retool and get a different team. And we came back and we had a we had a stand an ovation and then we got the chapter. But it's um, let me tell you, it's my lifeblood, like the boys club lows. And it, did, it doesn't pay me a cent. And it has changed my life lows. You talk about the Walter Kirkland, the transformation from being the quiet guy in Mount Vernon running track, who was on this national stage to the successful career person. Now the community guy, this has been so rewarding to me. I, I talk to my wife, Stephanie Kirkland all the time. These kids are going to college, they're graduating. They call me from El Salvador. It is so rewarding. And I'm sure you get the same stories, Lowe's, when these kids are saying, Mr. Kirkland, um, 
I'm, I want to thank you. What do you, what are you thanking me for? Well, you're the one that gave me the inspiration to, to, to stay out of trouble. You're the one why I'm graduating or the ones you get lows where I had a situation where there was a boy that was on lock was going to about to be on lockdown. And if I didn't go testify, they were going to lock him up. Um, you get those kind of hardcore down in this DC area that I don't mind being from New York city. I don't mind going in the hood. Uh, and matter of fact, I may hear bullets behind me. I mean, that's how crazy it gets down here, but for some reason, God has protected me. So the Hunter black man is a major institution. I'm on the national board. Um, we're doing so many great things for black Americans, youth and adults. And it's been a really a game changer for me because it's changed me in terms of affecting black boys and black girls from ages eight to 18. We even have a collegiate um, 100 in the college area in historically black colleges. So it's like a pre 100. And we meet every second Saturday. We have sessions. We've been doing it virtually. We have over 5,000 contact, contactless hours via Zoom competitions, African-American history competitions. We teach them how to speak, teach them how to do elevator speeches. We have scholarships. I've brokered deals with politicians. I'm working on a $5 million, I mentioned this to you, a $5 million grant for the whole Hunter Black Men of America. It ain't going to me, Lowe's, I wish. <laughs> it will be going to uh, about 10 or 15 chapters. So those are the things that is exposed me to new relationships that I would never be a part of. I've got job offers and it's been a miracle how I got involved with it. And one media person years ago, and God rest her soul, she got rear-ended, said, you need to, you know, I was trying to form another organization. You need to join the 100 Black Men. I'm like, what is that? I did my research and it's been an amazing journey and it continues to be an amazing journey. Well, yeah, and uh, you know, you mentioned up here in New York because mm -hmm. uh, a couple of organizations uh, first, is the African American Men of Westchester, which is okay. a tr similar organization uh, here in Westchester. But um, I also knew a number of uh, 100 Black Men organizations mm. in New York. And the interesting thing is that, you know, I, I met s several of them, even the president or vice president. Um, and they came down to see me at the Boys and Girls Club. And uh, the thing is, they wasn't necessarily looking for me to get involved. You I know, see. I was always, you know, I'm always like want to join other African-American men that were doing stuff, stuff to help, you know, com community stuff, mentoring to help young. I was, you know, always doing it in my Vernon. So in Westchester, and I was thinking like, oh, they coming down and maybe they, they want me, uh, you know, to, to get involved with the New York, but he used to come down. <laughs> he used to come down and talk to me about um, how they got, how could they get Denzel to become to honor Denzel Washington? Oh wow! Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Well, you you talk. I thought you was coming for me, but I, you you coming for Denzel? <laughs> come on, man. That's that misdirection, Lowe's. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I I used to research them. And they they did a tremendous a tremendous job with the mentoring program, as you said. And then there was the Eagle, uh, the Eagle Academy. Uh, mm -hmm. It graduates one of the one hundred percent of the African American young men that go to the schools with a strong right to passes program, which mm -hmm. is powerful. So, uh, kudos to the one hundred black men and what you're doing in regards to mentoring. And I think I came down and I was uh, participating in uh, one of your golf outings down yes, there. You yeah. were. That's did right. A, you did an amazing job, man. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it was it was just awesome. And and we have another one, Lowe's, that you got to come down on October 4th with the great Doug Williams, the Super Bowl champion. Yes. So you need to come make mark your calendar October 4th at the Country Club of Woodmore. We got Dominique Wilkes. I'm sure you know him. He's confirmed to play. OK, the Hall of Famer. Uh, we're working on um, Steve Harvey and some other notables, Chris Tucker. So I'll let you know about that. But that's going to be a big one. That's the Hunter Black Men of America. Right. Uh, right here in D.C., October 4th. So for you listeners, we also have um, activities for non-golfers. Uh, we're going to have a VIP reception. It's you don't want to miss it. Jazz live entertainment the whole weekend, October 3rd, 4th and 5th here in the Washington, D.C. region. So Lowe's can give you more information on that. 
Uh, yeah, th thank you, Walter. And remember, this is interactive. So if you got any questions for the great, I, the great Walter Kirkland, right? I know we got some old school out there. We got some new school. New uh, school, old school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got some old school and new school out there. Um, you know, and you know, a subject that I wanted uh, to get on, get into, uh, is that over the month of March, I had a number of pastors on. I saw that. Right. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, knowing that intellectually and physically, we have all been given it all that we have. Marching, dealing with social justice, uh, dealing with the pandemic, people living in fear, mental health issues, all things that you are reporting on, on Kirkland's Corner. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Tremendous show. Mm -hmm that you've had during, during this pandemic. Yep. Right. Address, addressing the health issues and all the different things like that. Yeah. And, and then we, earlier we were talking about faith we're talking about God. And the question I have for those pastors, is there more? And, 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 uh, you have visited us, visit us in our, uh, we were down in Baltimore when we had our men's conference, a men's retreat. Yes. And we, we're talking about, um, you know, uh, a more experiencing God more. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so I want to address that. And in my one of the second parts or the very beginning of my book, after the forward, I started to talk about that. Every one of us is born with a purpose and born with gifts. Mm -hmm. And we each have a core gift, but we have gifts. Like yes, core gift was not track. Probably your core gift right now is communication, you know. Yes, your core yes. Gift. But we have multiple gifts. Like many people don't know, not only can um, I play basketball, but I was a good artist, like, you know, cartooning and different things. So we don't we don't know. But and being an athlete or student athlete, being a former athlete, uh, I want to get into this. Uh, sphere of influence called sports, arts, and entertainment, mm -hmm. and, and maybe throw some business and politics and however. But mo most people focus on the the arts, entertainment, and sports. What I, I have on my Facebook page, I started was called the Purpose Driven Athlete. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I don't know about you, but I was purpose driven. You know, I knew. Uh, not only did I wanted to play professional basketball, yeah, right, but I wanted to play for a purpose. Number one, I wanted to eventually start my own business, and yep. number two, I wanted to use the resources that I have. Not only be blessed by those resources, but to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And 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 so, uh, you know, let's speak to because you you look at LeBron James, right, right, and I, I'll throw Jalen Rose. Uh, LeBron James, both of them started schools. Yeah. Great athletes, gain wealth, and and now giving back. Right. And so uh, talk to me a little bit about why athletes should have purpose and should be purpose driven. Well, I think you, you have to be purpose driven because you are, believe it or not, your role models. And for me, um, it's not just picking up a basketball or picking up a football or running your best race in life. You, in, you're going to laugh, Lowe's. You got to lead from the front. I say this to my wife all the time. You got to lead from the front. You, if you've been chosen to have this athletic ability and you're able to do that and st still be a student athlete, people are watching and listening, just like people watching and listening to your show and watching and listening to me on my show. You got to have a purpose because otherwise you're just kind of just hanging out there. And my purpose is to inspire and to motivate and to bring people together and to bring those rhythms together um, because it's so important to connect the dots. Because when you cross pollinate uh, different people from different walks of life as a leader, people will listen and then people you, you're working for a better or bigger goal. And I've always wanted to have my my own business too, Lowe's. I've worked for major corporations the last 30 years, 
and we've even talked about doing some stuff together, that the purpose is to inspire, obviously monetize it and make money, but are you really motivating people for the good? And spiritually is a, a very important component of that, but are you uplifting the youth, the next generation? Are you uplifting your people? Are you, when people leave me, leave me these comments about you inspire me, Walter, I needed that. That's what I live for, Lowe's. I live for the inspirational moment that you don't know what a person's going through. With the advent of COVID, with isolation, suicides up 30% for African-American boys between age, and we talked about is uh, eight to 18. Uh, Latinos are, the suicide rate is up, is pretty high. You need something to inspire and to have. And if you're an athlete, especially a world-class athlete, people will follow you and they will listen to you. So you got to really kind of plant your feet and lead from the front. And you got to be professional all the time. And as you said earlier, it's called active listening skills. And what I mean by that, listeners, is that you have to listen. You can't talk all the time. I learned so much about young people that I listen to them. I'm around them. People say, you know, you are OG, Mr. Kirkland, but you drip. You know, drip means looking good, feeling good and smelling good. So I try to keep that combination of old school and young school to keep me relevant. The real important thing, Lowe's, is to be relevant. And, you know, you and I talked about this. We got maybe another five, 10 years to be relevant. And that's why every day has to count and every breath has to count. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Uh, yeah, it, it, it does make sense. Um, um, it makes sense, but I, I got an, another take on um, on the aspect of getting over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't and think tonight. But... Thank you, Patrice. I see Patrice. You got some comments coming up. Thank you, Patrice. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's your, what's your take? Patrice is saying hello. Go ahead. Yeah. And, but um, do you know any athletes, entertainers, um, you know, or, or athletes that have become um, into the business world and you see them doing great stuff, starting foundations, different things like that? Well, I have to be honest. I mean, I've seen some started Lowe's, but I've seen some that are very selfish. And I really think Lowe's, and you and I have talked about this too, I think uh, we are taught that way. And I'm not being negative. Um, there are good people like LeBron. Oh, I think he's doing some he's doing some amazing stuff more than Michael Jordan ever did um, with his school and his foundations. Um, Jalen Rose is doing some good stuff, too. But there are the other ones that they in my I'm not again, I'm not being negative. They pontif pontificate. They make it a failed attempt. But um, I do know some. For example, when I do some of these celebrity golf events, I'll ask some of these professional athletes and they want to charge me eight thousand dollars where Art Monk, who just texted me earlier, the, you know, the retired football player from White Plains, mm -hmm. he'll come out and fly on his own coin and talk to the kids. And so I just think it's unfortunate that it's, it's always about the money. So I do know some, but I know more that are not giving back enough based on their level of income and sphere of influence. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to come back. We're gonna end the show with this, with that 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 whole focus. So we want to talk. We want to talk okay. to uh, uh, some about sure. that a little bit more because we we have to get more because there there's like John Stocks and and what John John Starks is doing with uh, uh, the New York Knicks and and their foundation and 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 giving back. And then there's Alan Houston with the Fizzle Project, uh, faith, integrities. Uh, sacrifice, leadership, mm -hmm. and legacy, uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's doing a number of different things like that. And we need to create more, yes, Starks and more um, uh, Allen Houston's. And then we need to know how to pool our resources, right? And I want to talk a little bit more about that as we end the show. Um, I like to pop on my, oh, I got a pop on guest. I want to pop on uh, for a few minutes. Oh, is that Billy Johnson? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ladies Billy? And gentlemen. What's up, Billy? Ladies Ladies and gentlemen. Billy Doing Johnson. Great, oh my God. Great. I, I don't, I don't great. know. Yeah. Okay. Show that picture don't of Billy. Try, in high school. <laughs> Somebody show that picture of Billy in high school. Billy Johnson. 
Show that picture. Yeah. Show that picture of Billy. Billy White Shoes Johnson. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, there you go. Uh, there you go. That's boy. my man right there, boy. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, those were the days, bro. Oh, those were the now, days, Billy. Now I gotta, now I gotta fake him. <laughs> I know you've had some hip surgery. I know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know. So, so I just gotta remember those days. But they were good days. They were great days, Billy. We were, uh, we were talking only about the yes, legacy sir. of Mount Vernon. And, um, you know, when you, we were showing up at uh, Long Island and the night track meets and the mile relay and we hit come the Mount Vernon boys. Yeah. It was a good feeling, Billy. It was a good feeling, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I wanted was to say. everybody good and uh, no COVID in the family? Nope. No. No, no, no. Well, we, you know, we had uh, my wife's aunt and, of course, my son-in-law, um, but he's kind of moved past uh -huh. this. But most most of everybody's been good, and also let me say that uh, I did get a text back from Val Jean. I try to get him to pop on too. He had a prior engagement uh -huh. down in Tampa. He told oh, you're trying to get Val? Oh, <laughs> yeah. He told me, he told me to tell you guys hello. And um, David hit me. Uh, he emailed me, and he said, "Man, you oh, know, okay. I'm kind of quiet. I'm just kind of quiet, man. You know, that's kind of <laughs> doing that. You know." I, I said, man, but you can pop on and say hello, man. We're not trying to get you into no dialogue. <laughs> yeah. Dave, Dave is real protective. Yeah, he's just not a talkative yeah. person, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, Dave is always quiet. Yeah. Yep. Except for behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> yeah. A, a, red, a red Impala, a 1969 Red Impala. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that car, Billy? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dave was something else. But um, you're all taking care of everything, right? And yeah, we took care of everything. I heard, about, I, heard of, I heard about Carlton. Yes, Carlton. Yeah, Norton. yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, the way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, Tony Crawford, we lost Tony Crawford. Was that two years ago, Lowe's, or one yes. year ago? Yes, yeah. 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 year ago. A year ago. A year ago. Yeah. But Billy, I wanted you to pop on and say hello. And man, I want to thank you for popping on, man. We got to do this yeah, again. Because you know. <laughs> I tell you, I don't usually do these things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Billy, I appreciate you, brother. Tell Wendy, tell Wendy, uh, tell oh, Wendy, said, uh, you know, tell, uh, tell Wendy, you tell we said hi. Yeah. Whenever you got something, baby, we sure will. You know the singing's getting ready to start back up again. Well, Stephanie so and I, we can't I'll be wait. a celebrity husband soon. Well, we look forward to uh, see them shows. Stephanie says hello okay. too to Wendy too. We sure yeah, will. Right. Cool, cool. Thanks a lot, man. All Thanks right, a lot. Yeah, for I got my grandkids here today. You All right, stay safe. Easy. Thank you, okay. Billy. Yeah, All man, right, Billy. love you guys. Love you too, man. Love you. Stay safe. All right, baby. All right. Yeah. Oh, man. You tried to set a brother up. Go ahead, love. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's, uh, I don't know if there's any questions out there. Remember, you, this is interactive. So if you got any questions for Walter, uh, you got any memories for Walter, man, pop them on, pop them on the screen, man, as yeah. we come down to these final moments here. But I want to talk about uh, the importance of athletes having a purpose. And, okay. to be, and and to be purpose driven, yep. You know, um, what's your take on it? You had a different take on it. What's your take in terms of the purpose? You said you, said you had a different take on it before we. When, I had a different. I had a different take on you were saying. Yeah, I know we're getting. Oh, you mean about Allen Houston? No, I was. You were just talking about. I had a different take on when you were saying we we're, we're getting older. Oh, <laughs> and, and, and we only have. Uh, a few more years here. <laughs> I said five five years, yeah. Five years. And yeah, I had a different take on that. Um, That's good. That's good. You know, when you think about uh was it Bob Proctor's 83, he's he hasn't slowed down yet. <laughs> right. I am taking the Bob Proctor approach. Man, that's that's good stuff, man. Yeah, I'm taking that approach. I'm I keep changing my paradigm. 
and <laughs> changing my frequency and my vibration, you know, and drawing and attracting people. Right. Yeah. Your, your, your circle of influence. Yeah. You, yes. And then in regards to the, um, you know, when I think of some of the athletes, particularly NBA players, I know uh, they're like Curtis. I'll, I'll say some some individuals like Curtis Martin. I had Curtis Martin on the show. Yeah. And, and Curtis One. Martin is a purpose driven athlete. Mm -hmm. um, as, as as like I mentioned, Allen Houston and John Stockton. Uh, not yeah, John Stockton, but also John Starks. Mm -hmm. uh, purpose driven, purpose driven athletes, and yeah. there are many of them who on my page, on the page for a purpose driven, um, it looks like my wife says Stanford ladies win the NCAA championship. Oh, there, we, there we go. Yeah, that, I think that's her first one, right? Um, and and and. and and, and look at look at Paul Paul Sherrill's, you know Paul Paul I see him. said Moses was eighty. God uh, made him the leader of his people. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Paul. Yeah, I think we just getting going, man. We we just getting started. Well, I love that. I love yeah. that attitude, man. Yeah. So, um, and it's important. Um, I think when uh, you see some some athletes today. Uh, particularly Jalen Brown, yes, of, of the Boston Celtics, very articulate. Yeah, um, spoke at Harvard. Um, so there's some guys out there who seem to be purpose in regards to a stream of culture, you know, and and, um, and that impact. And also, um, I'm trying to think of some. You know, when you see Kenny Smith, these are guys are retired, and Charles Barkley, they got foundations. Yeah. They have a lot of Steph Curry. Um, yeah, he has a relationship with uh, Howard University. He just donated $2 million to their golf program. Yeah, we don't talk much about that purpose-driven athlete. They, they they are beyond just playing playing sports. Like, you, you played sports, but look what you're doing now in regards to the community show. That's true. Right? And then bringing – people aware the awareness of health and all kind of issues that are going on out there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and I think what we need to do Lowe's is we need to, to your point earlier, I think we need to form an alliance or some sort of union with all these, these professional athletes um, and, and try to come to have a common purpose and a common output to impact the youth and impact our community. I think there's a lot of people running in silos and not effectively doing stuff together. Um, but, you know, I think it needs a little more focus to, you know, put that out there and let people know the good stuff that's happening and what not all athletes are, uh, you know, like, and I'm, I'm not saying Michael Jordan's a bad person, but he's just a little more selfish than some, some athletes. He's to make it an effort, but there are some good people doing some good stuff. Well, yeah. And I think Michael has grown over the years Yeah, in his recent investments. I think uh, he just donated a hundred million dollars towards uh this cause for injustice right mm -hmm. and over the next 10 years right so i think michael has matured and evolved that's great right and um, you should read that read that uh story recently and uh his impact um mm -hmm. you know impact particularly in the charlotte area uh, okay. his, his imp his impact but I, th I think we should be able to do what i consider is that we should do a conference yes a national conference yeah called the purpose driven athletes conference hmm. okay right where yes we're talking about being successful student athletes and athletes right but we have to sow the seed that we have to be able to turn around and come back and give back to our communities. Also, we need to talk about if there are uh, other individuals out there that need financial support when these guys are making millions and millions of dollars, are there projects out there that we could support? Yes, and you they know? need write-offs, they really do. And, and you know, a lot of these athletes, Lowe's, don't know some of this stuff. So they need write-offs and it's a good way to focus with some um, 
organizations that could use their help and support. There's a big push for um, uh, Black youth, Black Lives Matter, based on some of the reparations and what's happened with all this craziness with the Trump era. So I think it's the right time to do that, to get with some thought leaders and some leaders through the NBA, you know, through some of my contacts with Edwin Moses, he was, he's the world's famous hurdler. Um, mm -hmm. Tommy Smith is the brother who was on the stage with his fists. Yeah, you know, true. we have access to some really good, you know, the art monks of the world. Um, I think there could be something to that to motivate and inspire people uh, with some of the philanthropic things they're doing, but also from a spiritual and a, a motivational perspective. Yeah, like, you know, it, it's got to be about uh, faith, yes, intellect, physical, but it also has to be about resource. Resource, and I also think that we, we don't talk about is wealth development, intergenerational wealth. I'm working with another client who's doing a Black Wealth Summit, and I, I give him a lot of credit where he's gonna try to help black businesses, uh, how to raise money, how to form a company. Um, he's getting sponsors to donate money. And then the next phase of that's gonna be the Collegiate uh, Black Wealth Summit. So we need to bring the finance piece and how do you invest? Look at Shaq, you know, Shaquille O'Neal mm -hmm. has 200 companies, as you know. Uh, and the guy is, when you look at him, you're like, how is this guy doing it? He clearly understood the power of marketing. He's funny, he's uh, inspirational in a different way. He's seven foot tall and he's not the best communicator Lowe's, but there's something about his, he has that extra sense that people don't have. Charles mm -hmm. Barkley started to diversify his profile to do right. more marketing. Well, yeah. So, yep. Uh, Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson. You know, so, um, there, I, there was another uh, A-Rod. Yeah. You know, he started to diversify his, himself as well. Mm -hmm. But problem is, is pooling those things. Correct. Right. And I think there's the need to do that. I think you need people like a Lowe's Moore or Walter Kirkland, who's been professionally and professionally in as an athlete, but also as a professional person to be the conduit to bring it all together, to kind of make it uh, an output that everybody kind of learns and earns from. Yeah. And then the, I think the other side of it, too, is is that one of the things that Ben Gordon and I were doing uh, mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, in the game playing, and we taught we we did this thing called the game outside the game. Okay. Right. And 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 so, uh, you know, we brought in the individuals around Ben. Like at the time, he had a personal trainer, he had a finance person, uh, he had his foundation person, he had his Zeus. Right. He had all these different people around him and they he he they worked for him. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and and many of them were former athletes. OK. That had, uh, you know, thought they were going to be a pro. But but end up going pro in something else, you know. Yeah. And, and, and so uh, where kids begin to look at this earlier, because you're a student athlete in the beginning, you start looking at, OK, I want to play and I want to be this player and I want to be mm -hmm. professional. But we got to think about what we can fall back on yes. in case we don't make it in high school. Mm -hmm. in case we don't. What, what happens, man, if I came up and I wanted to be a pro and I got to Marvin in high school and I didn't make the team? What do I do now? Exactly. If, if I was already thinking in my mind, I love sports. Right. So what else would I do in sports? Would I be a broadcaster? Would I, you know, you know, would I be a coach? You know, so we we need to have our kids starting to. OK, I can't. I want to be a dancer. Right. But I can't right. get on the stage. So maybe I need to be a choreographer. Right. Right. I want to be an actor. Well, maybe I can't get on the screen. Maybe I'm a writer. And, and and we have to have things to fall back on. We need to fall back, to fall back, to fall back. Yeah, I think about, man, you're making me go back, wood shop. I used to love wood shop back in the day when you were making blocks and cars and because I was using my hands, Lowe's. So I think 
we need to find a way to develop secession plans for youth who think the less than 3% want to be an NBA star. And well, what do you do to your point afterwards? So I think we need to build that funnel. I'm also working with another organization where we're going to try to be the feeder base to athletes and students for these major corporations that are trying to hire black youth. But there's no one teaching the black youth how to interview. The other thing, Lowe's, that these young people do, my, my 10 years of mentoring, they lack what you and I had, Lowe's. You know what that is, Lowe's? is sense of urgency. Mm. When, Lowe's, when Lowe's Moore was coming down the hole on the elbow, you had so much determination, didn't you? Yes. You had so much determination that you were trying to either pass that ball or score that two points. But you had a sense of urgency, but you had a quiet sense of urgency. So did I. Mm -hmm. People say, why are you so angry? I wasn't angry, Lowe's. I was just motivated to win. I was motivated to do the best I could with a quiet tempered um, enthusiasm. I find with the youth of today, they're lackadaisical. They, they're just, they don't understand. When I got out of school, Lowe's, I was so appreciative to be the captain of the uh, track team. When I got my first job, I was just so appreciative to get a job that I was just, yes, sir. We have to get back to that fundamental respect. And guess what? Just because you played basketball or ran track, and you graduated from West Point or wherever, doesn't mean you're gonna get it. You don't have a guaranteed job. You gotta have that sense of urgency saying, let me do an internship. Let me partner with Mr. Kirkland, Mr. Moore. Can I work with you at the boys club? Whatever, and then help me get a job. I think that's what's missing with the African-American um, young boys and girls. And I'm also the assistant track coach at Bowie State where these young people, don't have a clue, Lowe's. You deal with the sexuality, you deal with single parenting, you deal with the drugs, you deal with COVID. We're in a very, very different state right now. Kids wanna be mentored, Lowe's. Kids wanna be led. They want you to tell them what to do, but if you're not authentic, get out of here, OG, you're wasting my time. So what I have found categorically uh, thank you, Larry Graham, for the words of inspiration. I appreciate you. What I have found categorically, if you lead from the front and that you are authentic, man, they will follow you to the well, Lowe's, but they're lacking that sense of urgency. Mr. Mr. Moore, what can I do to work for you, Mr. Mr. I will do whatever you want. Mr. Kirkland, how can I do an uh, internship to, to sell and be a marketeer? You know, and I'll do it free. You know how many jobs I did at radio stations, Lowe's, just to learn the business? And guess what happened? I got in there. You know what? You're pretty good, man. We might want to use you. That's what's missing. That's what we have to do through these conferences, through the Allen Houstons of the world, all the people you mentioned, and bring that piece in with spirituality. That's the, that's the paradigm shift that we have to have now in a hurry. Well, yeah. And, and you mentioned a key word, uh, words, paradigm shift. Right. And a paradigm is a program. Yes. And, and it's sad that uh, many of the young people we see, and this is goes across all culture, mm -hmm. right, are find themselves in a place where they're just not motivated. Yes. You know, they don't want to get up and go to school. They want to learn. They don't want to do any of these things. Right. Until it's too late. Right. And they, they almost. They are almost graduating from college, high school. They're right there, the junior year, senior year. And that's like, oh, it's almost over. Now everybody's thinking about their grades. They think, about, oh, I got to get better grades. I want to go. You know, you have to be thinking about that early. Right. And we need to change that. We need to change that paradigm. Because Lowe's, 80 percent of people that are incarcerated that, that, that do crimes. Guess what? They don't graduate from high school. You know why? Lowe's, they're giving up on life. I've heard several young people say to me, Lowe's, and these are boys at 13, 14. I'm not going to be alive at 25. So why does it matter, Mr. Kirkland? These are good boys, Lowe's, that are stealing Timberlands, that got caught up stealing PCs. Well, why'd you do it, Johnny? Well, because I got bored and um, I had nothing else to do. They don't understand the brevity and the magnitude of being incarcerated. They don't care, Lowe's, and it's scary. 
you and I, even though we had a single parent and my mom raised us, athleticism, I'm telling you, saved me, saved my life because it gave me something to look forward to. And then just being a good person um, helped me. So I think that's what we have to do with your organization and as we do other stuff together, there's a big need for that. And then you have five, you have grants out there that could fund these projects that we could really help our people. Well, yeah, and, and I wanna say this as we come down to a close and I'm gonna use purpose, one of my favorite guys, uh, <laughs> Dr., um, Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, and many of his books on the pursuit of purpose. Yes. Right. And he he's made a quote. Um, the only thing worse than life, the only thing worse than death is a life without purpose. Hmm. Right. And so if and this is for every individual, whether you in whatever sphere you're in. Right. Whether it's religion. Uh, family with social workers. You know, if it comes about your bottom line is about just about dollars, right? You're you're in the wrong mindset, right? You you have to have a purpose along with resource that you're making or being blessed, then to be a blessing. And 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 I, I say that you know whether you're a businessman, your purpose is to support and help people grow and mentor people whether you're in sports arts and entertainment it should be the same thing whether you're in media it should be the same thing whether you're in politics or government or law whatever you're in a part of your being blessed should be about being a blessing and you, you know giving back mentoring volunteering your time your time your talent your treasure mm -hmm. right is and every time i every time we do that lows god will bless us when we least expect it every single time. So it's not about us. It's what you give every day. Right. And so two questions real quick. Right. Uh, one outside of your family. Right. Who's one of the persons that's most influenced you? Wow. Outside my family. Wow. That's a good question. That's a deep question. So I can't say my wife that I ran outside my family. Right. Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, definitely. I have to say my wife, um, Stephanie Bridgeworth Kirkland, has been monumental in formulating me to calm down and to, to be a better husband. And I tell you, she we got married uh, some four years ago, and she's been a blessing. She has a great family. The stuff I didn't have. Thanks for showing those great pictures. That's me competing as a senior Olympic. By the way, I'm still competing out there with my old self. Uh, that's just going to a, an event and um, I'll be competing uh, in Fort Lauderdale in May of next year in the 400 meters. So I still run. But uh, I would say she's been the most influential person in my life. Uh, oh, you got that picture of me running. OK. In the last uh, four or five years, she's been an amazing from a spiritual perspective and her family and a foundation has been Stephanie Bridgeworth Kirkland. Yeah. And and if you had something. Uh, if you had to leave a message with some young person today who may be looking or will look at this in, in the future or some parent may show them, listen mm -hmm. to this, what would you say to a young person today? I, I would say every day you wake up, like you and I do, how can I be better? How can I influence someone else's life? Have a sense of urgency because no one's going to give you nothing. Always be prepared, just like Lowe's did and I did for our competitions and battle. And just be prepared every single day and be humble because the minute you get cocky, Lowe's, you know the floor will fall out of you. So just be ready, um, ready for competition. Prepare, do your homework, stay focused, keep God in your life and surround yourself by people that are smarter than you. And that will make a difference in your life. Yeah. I heard it said that humility precedes blessings. Yes. Now yeah. you got to be confident. Yeah. You can't, you can't be, you know, they would take my lunch money if I was, if I was like a little, you know, you, you can't be, you got to be confident, but you can't be cocky because God will, God will give it to you, but he will take it away. But people like confidence, but not cockiness. Yeah. So Walter, I want to thank you, man. This has been great. I've enjoyed the conversation. Um, we, we're going to have to do this again. 
I think so, man. This right. has been awesome. This this has been like waiting to exhale. I didn't think I I thought I'd be interviewing about, but this is a good stuff, man. This is yeah. really a, a game changer, bro. Yeah, I appreciate your time. And I want to say thank you to everybody who support the blueprint each and every week. Um, you know, next week we're gonna have uh the great Pastor Richardson, Franklin W. Richardson from from uh Grace Baptist Church, along with uh, or the second half of the show is going to be Pastor Cornell from Overcoming Faith Ministries. Nice. They're going to be on uh, next week, and we're going to talk about is there more. So have a wonderful weekend. Yes. Rest of the weekend. You only got a few more hours left, and then have a blessed week. God bless you. I love you, and look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you, Lois. Thank you, Walter. All right. Peace. Peace. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's More and on Facebook at Lowe's More Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. What they teaching is a joke. I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant.